In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will begin this day. I thank you, Lord, for having preserved me during the night. I will do my best to make all I do today pleasing to you, in accordance with your will. My dear Mother Mary, watch over me this day. My guardian angel, take care of me. Saint Joseph and all you saints of God, pray for me. Amen. Okay, so there. Um, okay, so I'm saying um, this is going to be the third installment of the Don Bosco Press um, Chalk Talk Online in partnership with the Psychological Association of the Philippines. And our topic is equipping the teachers with basic skills for psychosocial intervention. Okay. So um, is everybody um, getting this? Thank you. So let's start the ball rolling. So let's uh, now call in um, uh, the executive director of Don Bosco Press to formally welcome everybody and to introduce our keynote speaker for today. Let us call in Brother Carmelo Martinez, Solutions of Don Bosco. Thank you, Mom Reg. Good morning to all of you, our dear participants to this Chalk Talk online series on promoting mental health and mental wellness in schools. We are very happy to be with you this morning for this session. And to start our morning discussion, may I just ask you this question? How are you today? A, are you happy? B, are you sad? C, excited? D, anxious? E inspired. The poll is up for you to answer. Let's just get in touch with our feelings. Okay, thank you for responding to that poll. Yeah, we can see that around 46% of our participants this morning describe themselves as happy. And then around 23, 25% are inspired with around sharing around the same number of percentage, both those excited and anxious at around 15%. Yeah, we are happy to know that our participants this morning are only either happy, excited, yes, a bit anxious, given our situation right now, but many are also inspired. Yeah, no one chose the option sad, and we are happy to know that. We thank the Psychological Association of the Philippines for par partnering with us at Don Bosco Press in providing quality and relevant input on how we face the different challenges that we have now in schools and in our homes. This is already the third installment, as Mam Reggie also mentioned, in this series of four sessions. The first session introduced us to the scope, necessary support system, and structure needed, particularly in schools, in order to assure the psychological well being of all our stakeholders, especially at this time of pandemic. Two weeks ago, we discussed. On our second session, we discuss how to develop and what to consider in establishing a balanced mental health program in schools, particularly at this time. May I ask you about your, in terms of your participation? So here's another poll for you to answer. Have you joined our previous Chalk Talk online sessions on promoting 
mental well-being in schools? A, if you've been present, present since our first session and you joined both the first and the second. B, if you only were able to join one out of two session, sessions and then see if this is going to be your first time. Okay. The majority of our participants this morning have been present both in the first and in the second sessions. Okay, there is a small percentage, around 8% of us present here this morning were able, uh, yeah, participants, around 8% were able to join either the first or the second session. And also a good number of our participants this morning are joining us for the first time. For those who have been with us in our previous sessions, thank you so much for coming back. We hope that you will have a wonderful morning this morning. And to those who are just joining us for the first time, yeah, welcome to and we hope that you will be enriched by this session and that we will be again together in our last session two weeks from now. Okay, thank you. Today we are gathered here again for another very important topic, equipping teachers with basic skills for psychosocial intervention. Though DepEd postponed the opening of the school year to October 5, I think private schools are given the option. They may start between now and October 5. They mentioned earlier that it is highly encouraged that schools provide psychosocial intervention at the start of the school year. And we are here today precisely for this. What is a psychosocial intervention? What must be its content? How should it be delivered? And many other questions perhaps are bothering us right now. All this we hope will be answered by our speaker this morning. Also, the video recording of our previous sessions have already been uploaded in our YouTube channel. Please feel free to access them and share them or download them. And we will be happy to know that we are able to help you in some way. May we also invite you to like and follow our Facebook page for regular updates on our upcoming and on ongoing seminars and other activities. I have one last question for you this morning. And we would like to know what responsibility are you going to, to take? What is the nature of the responsibility that you're going to have in your school this coming school year? Okay, their responses are now coming in. Okay, there are class advisors in the group. There are also subject teachers. Of course, there are guidance counselors. There are also non-teaching personnel and there are school administrators and even parents. Uh, there are also those who describe themselves as part of the last option, which is others. Perhaps those who have identified themselves as others, can you please uh, type in the chat box, uh, what do you mean by being part of these others? So that more or less, we'll have a clearer picture of our participants this morning. Yeah, thank you so much for participating in that poll. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po at masaya kami dito sa Don Bosco Press na makasama kayo ngayong umaga. Pagpalainawa tayo ng buong may kapal. It is also my privilege to introduce to you our speaker this morning. Our speaker is Ms. Mary Ann A. Portuguese. She is a graduate of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines where she also completed her master's degree in psychology. She is a registered psychologist, psychometrician. She is a freelance national lecturer and a psychology blogger and vlogger. She is known as your millennial psychologist. So you can you can find her her 
her vlog on YouTube and later on I hope she'll also advertise her her site. She is a lecturer at the Graduate School of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and a consultant psychologist at Child Farm Possibility Psychosocial Services. She is an active member of the Pambansang Samahan sa Psikolohiyang Pilipino and the Aso Psychological Association of the Philippines LGBT Psychology Special Interest Group. And currently the co-chairperson of the said special interest group that promotes the rights, well-being, and gender equality. She is also one of the core members of Hashtag Mental Health PH, a non-profit organization that promotes mental health and well-being using social media platforms, and advisor of Mind Nation, a telemental health company. Furthermore, she was featured in TV documentaries, news, promotional videos, and radio programs related to her advocacy. Ms. Rian describes herself as a staunch mental health and LGBTQ plus advocate. Together with her, during the discussion after the input, Ms. Rian will be joined by Ms. Juliet Consista, a registered guidance counselor and is currently the guidance counselor of the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School. Friends, let us now welcome Ms. Mary Ann Portugues, our speaker for, the, for this morning, and later on, she will be joined in by Ms. Juliet Consista, our moderator. Welcome, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, good morning, brother. Good morning, everyone. Hi. So I'm really happy. I'm glad that majority of you are happy. Despite of difficulties, diba? you're still here. And na manage pa ninyo to attend this webinar. Um, Ma'am, I hope you can help me with my presentation. <laughs> okay. I know it's really been hard no, for the past few months. Um, we're still struggling and adjusting um, to the situation that COVID-19 is not only an epidemiological crisis, as you can observe, it's also a psychological one. And in fact, no, mental health cases are, are reported to be increasing. Uh, though we don't have an exact um, data or number about, uh, about the exact data as of this moment, but... Um, Maraming reports from different mental health um, centers or from um, different institutions and even from mental health professionals um, mismo, no? they can actually feel the surge of online help no? from different people. So I am honored to be part of this initiative of Salishana uh, Books to help prevent the increase of mental health concerns by providing this basic psychosocial intervention. And Obviously, then, naman kasi yung huge population natin ngayon um, are students and yung role po ninyo no, as provider, sobrang laking reach niya to actually help um, a lot of people, especially your students. So I hope no, um, you'll engage, no, you'll you'll try to uh, ask questions by the end of this um, session. Kasi I'm really willing to answer your questions po. No? And even if you want to share something lang or insights lang after this webinar, feel free then po later on. So now let's have the objective of this, objectives of this um, presentation. Okay. So first is understand how to obtain and maintain good mental health. Well, I believe that as teachers or providers of basic psychosocial intervention, I think it's also important that uh, you'll have a refresher on mental health as well as to determine your own current mental health status. So by learning about the mental health spectrum, I don't know if you're familiar with mental health spectrum, but I'll discuss each part of the spectrum. And you'll know which part ng spectrum kayo if you're on the normal range, if you're on the coping range or struggling ba or unwell na. Yeah. So by understanding your current status, no, it will also help you to um, to understand yung possible na current status ng students ninyo kung itatry nyo din sa kanila. No? So, and next, to learn the basic principles of psychological first aid, which is yung look, listen, and link. 
these three principles were connected or were in line with the remote uh, supportive communication. And this will be discussed later on. And then to learn how to communicate in a supportive manner through remote communication during COVID-19. And then enhance your students' help seeking efficacy. Because so most of the time, students are really afraid of opening up about what they feel or what they are going through due to uh, social stigma associated with mental health um, concerns. No, But I do hope after this uh, webinar, all of you will be empowered to, to reach out and to break the barriers between you and your students. And hopefully, hindi din po kayo matakot no, na mag-reach out for help. Because I believe uh, many many of you are majority of teachers then parang takot din silang mag-provide ng help because they don't know to approach the situation. So, I think ayan yung um, i-discuss ko din later on. No? Uh, there's nothing ano naman, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, basta meron kayong uh, basic idea then on how to refer, when to refer, where to refer, yung students niyo. If in case na meron kayong manotis ng mga for example, red flags or possible mental health concerns. Yan. And you will get this ano, um, PDF. No? Kaya meron din po kayong guide. Yan. Now, let's try to define mental health. Well, if we try to define con concisely no, yung, yung mental health, um, pwede natin siya i-define lang ng ganito ka-simple. It includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. So it affects how we think feel and act. So, kung ano yung iniisip natin, it will influence no, how we feel. And then yung how we feel, no, it can actually influence how we act or how we behave. Yung lahat na to, yung think, feel, and act, nag influence la sa isa't isa. Kaya one of the misconceptions no, na usually na-encounter ko as a mental health professional, yung lahat ko naririnig sa uh, mga tao na mental health, mental health disorders, it's all in the mind, no? which is um, hindi siya totoo na it's all in the mind because mental health is very physical too. Like for example, when you, encounter, when you have uh, anxiety, no? yung shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing, um, yung fast beating of the heart, yung cold, uh, cold palm, no? yung sweating ng palms, no? very physical din siya. So it's not all in the mind lang. No? Kaya nga sabi natin, no? how we think no? will influence yung how we feel and how we act. And then, nag influence sila sa isa't isa. So, um, it's also important na ma-define din natin yung mental health based on World Health Organization definition. So, sabi kasi sa, um, sa WHO, um, it's a state of well-being in which every individual realizes um, their potentials. They can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to their community. Um, I think I need to clear yung parts ng definition dito kasi baka kapag sinerge niyo siya sa Google tapos nabasa niyo siya, tapos hindi siya nag um, sa satisfy, no? It doesn't really satisfy yung lahat ng mga qualifiers niya, no? Baka isipin niyo na you're not mentally healthy. Um, based on our current situation, there is a pandemic outbreak. Um, it is it is uh, understandable na hindi po tayo ganun ka-productive or hindi po ganun ka-fruitful yung ating output, for example, sa work. Um, na hindi din po tayo ganun kabilis na makapag-cope, no? Because yung situation natin, hindi po siya talaga totally normal. So, um, yung idea dito sa definition na to, no? Huwag po tayo mababahala kung sakaling hindi po natin nasasatisfy kaagad yung definition ng mental health, no? Maaring nasa coping tayo or nasa struggling tayo. But again, um, it doesn't mean na maaaring meron na kagad tayong psychological disorder. Kaya, importante din, no, na kapag nafe-feel ninyo na you're struggling or um, may difficulty na sa part na inyo na ma-manage ito, it's okay to seek help or it's okay to ask for help from a mental health professional po. Kasi our approach to mental health should be preventive than curative. So, syempre, as uh, provider of psychosocial intervention, dapat nagre-reflect muna din sa atin yun, no? yung taking care of our mental health muna. Kasi it's really impossible for us or it's really difficult for us to provide psychosocial intervention or basic psychosocial intervention to our students if tayo din po, hindi natin inaalagaan yung sarili natin. No? So, dapat nagmamodel din or nagre-reflect muna sa atin yun before tayo mag-provide din ng help sa ating students. So, yeah.
Now, let's proceed with the mental health spectrum. Yeah. So, sa mental health spectrum, I'll discuss yung each, ano lang, each part, no? And then, try to determine which part of the spectrum kayo. Yan, belong. Or, if ever, may encounter po ninyo ito, may instances na mag-mix up yung characteristics. And that's okay. Later, di-discuss ko naman yung um, specific part or yung specific na parang qualifier kung meron ka na bang problema or hindi. Pero yung basic, i-discuss ko lang na siya. Pero natural na may mag-mix dito. Like, for example, uh, maaring nasa healthy ka, pero may konting karakteristik ka halimbawa ng coping or baka may makuha kang isang karakteristik halimbawa sa struggling, that's normal. Basta, which yung part ng spectrum na mas madami, yung karakteristik more likely nandun ka. And yung naging outlier, that's something to look to look at or i-assess mo. Bakit kaya ito? Ano kaya ibig sabihin ito? What, what does it mean? No? What does it mean kung bakit ito yung nakifeel ko? No? Yeah. So let's have the mental health spectrum. So, being healthy doesn't mean that you are free from this stress, okay? So, um, stress also is not necessarily an enemy, no? Um, yung stress, um, you sh- yung, yung definition talaga ng stress, that is actually our reaction or yung body's reaction to stressor or yung mga difficult um, situations, yon. So, um, not necessarily po na enemy natin yung stress. So, it doesn't mean na kapag healthy ka, wala ka na kagad na stress. Kasi healthy people also experience a form of um, distress. Pag sabing distress, yung negative stress. And then, meron din naman tayong positive stress, which is yung, yung stress. So, again, hindi natin enemy ang stress. At uh, it doesn't mean na kapag healthy tayo, wala tayong stress. Okay? So, kung feeling ninyo, um, hindi kayo totally healthy ngayon, I mean, wala kayong nakaka-experience kayo ng distress, it doesn't mean na meron kagad kayong mental health concern, ha? Kasi it's also normal po, kahit kayo ay healthy. So, for healthy spectrum, these are the characteristics. Healthy people have normal mood fluctuations. Um, they are calm and uh, they take things in stride. So, meaning they can still manage yung mga difficulties that they encounter. Yung normal mood fluctuations, um, bakit siya tinawag na normal mood fluctuations? Kasi yung the way they respond to this situation, no, appropriate naman siya. So, for example, very distressful talaga itong event na to. So, makaka-feel sila ng feelings of sadness or yung feelings of somehow a little of um, helplessness. Pero after a while, magiging okay ulit sila kapag nawala na yung ganong klase ng situation. So, normal mood fluctuation, something na hindi totally um, nagtatagal. No? It's only short-lived. Ayan. And then they have a good sense of humor. They can actually look at the bright side of things pa. Ayan. They can perform well and they are in control, no, with the situation. So when when you say perform well, maaring nag nagiba yung ating definition ng uh, performance na ngayon, ano kasi during this ano no pandemic, yung perform well, yung kahit normal na masubmit mo halimbawa yung output mo hindi man sobrang fruitful. It's 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 considered as something na pwedeng good no kasi this kasi meron tayong additional stressor ngayon eh no? bukod sa general stressor meron tayong um, pandemic outbreak na nafi-feel no kaya yung um, perform well na yan pwedeng medyo bumaba ng kaunti yung standard na tinatawag natin ano ayan so when it comes to normal sleeping patterns they, there are still few sleeping ano difficulties no lalong lalo na kung nasa adjustment period tayo. Like for example, from ECQ tapos bina naging GCQ, no? Yung yung mga ganong klase ng adjustment, halimbawa, because nag-change din yung ating um, routine, no? Uh, that's normal. That's normal na may mga difficulties tayo sa adjustment. But overall, when you try to evaluate your sleeping quality, no? Okay pa naman siya, no? Okay pa naman siya. And these people, they are physically well. They have good uh, sense of energy, Yan. And they, they can still so socialize with other people, kahit virtually. Ayan. They can still answer phone calls. They can still reply through emails. Yan. For coping, meron tayong transitioning. From normal mood fluctuations, it changed from, ano na, from normal mood fluctuations, naging irritable or impatient na siya. May ganun ng feeling. There's also a presence of nervousness, um, sadness, or sometimes feelings of uh, being overwhelmed with problems, yeah, may ganun na siya. And then from good sense of humor, it transitioned to displaced 
sarcasm. And sarcasm kasi, it can also an indication talaga na nagko-cope ka. Kasi meaning, um, yung tendency ay um, you tend to view things in a negative manner. Pero hindi mo siya um, totally ma-express kaya dinadaan mo sa sarcasm. So, ibig sabihin ikaw ay nasa coping, no? Medyo may negative na din yun ng konti. Yan. So, procrastination. Naging present na. Forgetfulness. Sometimes you are forgetful with yung time, date, di ba? Yung day. Yan. And then, trouble sleeping. Intrusive thoughts, no? Meaning yung mga, sometimes nag-ruminate ka halimbawa or may mga thoughts na paulit-ulit that can actually affect your sleeping. Ayan. Then, may iba na may presence of nightmares na. And when it comes to uh, body, nakasabi ko kanina, for, for normal, no? Physically well and good energy level. For coping, no, yung mga tao na to, they have muscle tensions, headaches, they have low energy. And when it comes to socialization, nag-decrease na yung kanilang socialization. And then, the struggling spectrum, from irritable and impatient, it becomes anger. And then yung nervousness, naging anxiety. And then yung sadness natin, naging longer period na siya, naging pervasive sadness. So, paano naging pervasive sadness? Meaning, it, na, 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 na siya, na, nagkaroon na siya ng influence sa other aspect of your life at mas matagal na din siya. And then there's also a feeling of hopelessness. And then yung display sarcasm, it turned to negative attitude. no? As in, uh, maari meron ng hostility toward other people. O kaya yung, yung, yung when you try to assess your thoughts, medyo negative na din talaga when you look at situations. No? Wala ng good sense of humor. Yung silver lining, naging malabo na siya. Ayan. And then, poor performance at work. Sometimes, kabalik na po siya, no? Uh, not necessarily poor performance. Parang poor performance siya, pero hindi mo siya totally makikita yun agad na parang poor performance. Kasi minsan makikita mo sa work na parang workaholic siya. Pero kung itatry mong i-tingnan, um, yung pagiging workaholic niya, is it really, ano ba, um, is it really... Um, na 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 giging ano ba siya masasatisfy ba niya yung talagang output na kailangan niya kasi maaring yes workaholic meaning kahit na sa bahay siya nag-extension talaga ng hours to work no but it doesn't mean na nag-extension ng work niya ng working hours niya maganda yung quality ng kanyang performance ang ang point doon maaring nagiging workaholic siya or nagsuspension ng too much time sa work niya nag-extend ng time kasi mayroong poor concentration so, kaya matagal siyang gumawa, no? Ayan, kaya nag-extend tuloy ng hours, no? Not necessarily na maganda yung performance. And then, they are restless, disturb yung sleep, recurrent images, mas naging intense, nagkaroon ng nightmares, yan, may nightmares din siya pa rin. And then, when it comes to yung body, na nafe-feel nila, increased body pains and aches, nagkaroon ng increased fatigue. And then, when it comes to social interaction, they tend to avoid, no? Yung calls, O kaya naman may delay dun sa replies. No? They, they just don't want to answer sometimes. Ganyan. They tend to withdraw themselves no? from, from their loved ones or from their friends. Sa unwell naman, nakikita natin dito, nag-transition from anger, naging angry outbursts. It's like meron ng expression ng kanilang feeling ng anger. No? May potential harm toward other people. No? Ayan. Excessive anxiety. Mas matagal na yung anxiety niya. Nagkaroon na ng panic attacks din. And then depressed suicidal thoughts. Ayan. And then there is also overt insubordination when it comes to work. Hindi na nagpa-follow dun sa protocol. Hindi na nagsasabit on time. They can't perform their duties. They can't concentrate. They can't fall asleep. Or they it's difficult for them to stay asleep. Um, sleeping too much or sleeping too little. And then yung kanilang na-experience na fatigue, yung kanila dun sa struggling part na increased body pains and aches, it turned to become physical illness na. And your physical illness na experience is because of the presence of mental health problems. Sabi natin kanina, yung mental health problems natin is very physical. So, yeah, kaya may physical illness na din. And then there's also a constant fatigue. And then when it comes to social interaction, they don't want to go out. They don't want to answer their phone na. They don't want to involve themselves no, dun sa outside world. May pagkaganyan na siya, withdrawal na siya. So, based dito sa ating discussion, try to assess yourself saan kaya kayong part dito. Healthy, coping, struggling, or unwell. 
you don't need to answer, no? Hindi, hindi niya naman kailangan sagutin. So, it's something that you uh, need to ask yourself, no? Ayan. Now, let's proceed with uh, ways, no? Ways to to well-being. Kasi syempre, di ba, uh, we need to do something. Now, when we feel this, no? We need to do something para mag-improve yung ating well-being. And ano-ano ba yung mga different ways to improve yung well-being natin? So, we have this connect, be active, take notice, keep learning, and yung give. So, yung model na to, ito yung mga specific set of actions na kailangan natin gawin to promote or to enhance our well-being. So, when we say connect, no? It tells something about our social and emotional support because based on research, no? Increasing your social and emotional support, no? Will increase or boost your well-being. Hindi lang actually yung um, mental well-being natin, but also your physical well-being natin. Kasi when we are connected to our loved ones, our brain, no, secretes or releases hormones, no, uh, yung mga neurotransmitters, and neurotransmitters such as oxytocin and endorphins, no, yung mga feel-good hormones, no, kaya gumaganda yung ating nararamdaman. Ayan, and also, mabilis tayo makarecover from setbacks, no, when we have a good support system. Kaya don't don't hesitate no to to vent no your problems to your trusted loved ones or trusted friends kasi it really helps no ayan um yun try to uh, connect no try to connect don't forget not to connect and it's something na pwede niyo rin na um i-suggest sa mga students din niyo kapag nagkakaroon sila ng problem yung the mere fact na for example nag-connect sila sa inyo good na yon no isa ka na doon sa kanilang support system and then, be active. So, when we say be active, it's about yung physical natin. Uh, meaning, you need to be, you need to do something na para mag-improve yung physical wellness ninyo. Like, you go for a walk or run, you, or even dun sa busy schedule natin, we need to find time or squeeze time, squeeze in time para makapag-work out. At least 10 minutes or at least 30 minutes. Ang suggestion talaga dyan, 30 minutes na work out. Um, for example, yung mag-download kayo ng Zumba, then do... Uh, follow me in your Zumba videos. Or you can do something na mag-move ka lang, like yung stretching, ayan. Or you can do, uh, you can just play a game. Dance, o kaya naman, um, do something na mag enjoy ka. Ayan. Yung iba, yung trend yung ropes, no? Okay siya. Kasi it's important na we move, no? Now we are moving. Para nagamit, uh, para ma-activate din yung mga um, hormones na natin sa brain na magpapadagdag ng ating um, or magbubus ng ating wellness. And then the, the other one, no? Yung next natin, yung take notice. When you say take notice, dito sinasabi yung uh, pagiging curious, no? We need to catch a sight of uh, beautiful things around us, no? Yung maging, um, Mindful tayo sa nakikita natin. So, try to notice yung mga unusual things. Ayan. Try to notice yung things. Uh, try to savor the moment. Leave the here and now. No, important po itong take notice na to because it has something to do with mindfulness. Um, as you notice po, um, because of this pandemic outbreak, maraming nag-increase yung anxiety nila or anxiety symptoms. Not necessarily na anxiety disorder, na anxiety symptoms. Meaning yung yung pagiging fearful nila na hindi hindi siya normal na fearful pero yung pagiging anxious pero wala din naman dun sa disorder spectrum kasi yan. Kumbaga may anxiety symptoms sila. And it's because most of the time these people nasa future oriented state sila. They tend to think of what ifs. At yung dahil dun sa what ifs na yun nag-lead sa mga worst case scenarios. No, lagi silang future oriented. Kaya tuloy no mas lalo silang nagkakaroon ng distress lalo sila nag-increase tuloy yung anxiety symptoms nila at siya na anxious tayo nag-increase distress nila sa physical na we are more vulnerable to disease kailangan po natin this moment mag-increase yung ating immune system paano mag-increase yung immune system kung yung mind natin nag-wonder sa future nag-wonder sa mga fear nangyari so itong Take notice, no? Iga-ground kayo nito ngayon sa here and now. So, try to um, try to um, experience yung nangyari ngayon sa 
current situation ninyo. Try to use your sense, yung senses, yung five senses natin, yung eyes nyo, notice ninyo. Smell, ano yung pwedeng makatulong sa inyo para uh, ma, maka, magamit ninyo yung sense of smell ninyo at mag-ground kayo ngayon sa reality, di ba? Touch, di ba? Gamitin ninyo yung senses ninyo. No? Take notice, no? be aware of the world around you. Ayan. So, pag nakakatch yung sarili nyo, nag-isip na naman kayo sa future, balik sa here and now. No? Then, give. Forgive, no? Dito naman sinasabi yung do something for your friend or to your loved ones. Kasi based on research, no? Do something like um doing a little act of kindness to to someone, no? Hindi lang sila yung nagbe-benefit doon. Tayo din po nagbe-benefit doon, no? Nabubus din yung ating uh, self-esteem. Nagkakaroon ng sense of fulfillment because you help one person or napasaya may isang person, di ba? Uh, nag improve yung ating mental health when we give something, no? Pero syempre, yung pag-give natin sa isang tao na yon, we don't expect something in return. Kasi doon, pag may expectation, mas stress tayo dyan, magkakalo ng distress. So, yung mga another example ng give natin, taking someone, appreciating them, telling them na you love them, di ba? Yung mag-join din kayo halimbawa ng community group, and mag-share kayo ng mga post na mag bubus ng um ng mood ng mga tao sa social media no it actually helps no may ripples yan ng positivity ayan and then um yung ating last which is yung ating keep learning so when we say keep learning it it tells us about um explore yung opportunities na meron tayo ngayon try something new we discover an old interest or ignite your passion you ignite your passion you can also sign up for uh, new course na gusto niyo matutunan. Yung ginawa nito ninyo ngayon, it's an example of keep learning. No? Good yan. So, that's another step to well-being. Umatan kayo dito. So, cook your favorite food. You can also try yung mga new dishes online, di ba? Like yung mga baked sushi, ganyan. No? Kaya pwede kayo mag-try ng mga dalgoan na coffee, di ba? Yung mga nagiging ano natin ngayon sa social media, you can try that out, no? Hindi lang nag increase yung inyong skills sa mga bagong ito. Natutuwa ka din kasi meron ka nagagawa. ba? One of the problem na na-encounter po natin sa pandemic outbreak, yung sense of pagiging purposeless, yung uncertainty, yung parang wala kang direction. So when you do something for yourself, when you do something kahit maliit lang siya for the day, no, nagkakaroon ka ng sense of fulfillment. At nakakatulong siya para mag-improve yung well-being ninyo. Somehow, yung uncertainty na babawasan kasi nga, nagpo-focus na lang kayo sa kung anong meron ngayon. No? Appreciation, be grateful, yung gratitude, no? malaking tulong siya, mga ganyan. So, yun, uh, try to explore things that are fun to do. Yan, challenge din yung sarili ninyo. Try to search for yung seven-day challenge, di ba? Yan, para makatulong din sa well-being po ninyo. So, ito yung mga uh, ways to improve your well-being. Now that you are already equipped dun sa basic um basic idea about mental health, no, knowing your your present um present condition using yung ating mental health spectrum, no, yung sa characteristics and also kung feeling mo the struggle ka or papunta ka dun sa unwell, di ba? Um nakatulong naman tong yung five ways to well-being, at least quick tips lang to improve your well-being. So ngayon, I think medyo ready kayo kay papaano na no? makapag-provide ng psychosocial intervention. No, sa ibang tao. Kasi at least nagkaroon kayo ng idea on how to take care of yourself, how to take care of your mental health. Okay? So now let's proceed with PFA. So when we say PFA, so what comes to your mind muna? Diba? What comes to your mind when you hear psychological first aid? Ayan. So you can type in your ano, your response na dito sa ating chat box. Ayan. So, what comes to your mind when you hear psychological first aid? Mm -hmm. Ano kaya ibig sabihin ng psychological first aid? Kahit one word lang na na-activate sa mind ninyo. So, pag sabihin psychological first aid, what does it mean? Ayan. So, pwede kayo mag-chat. Ayan. Mag Mag-sulat. Ayan. Ayan. So, I think meron tayong new response. Ayan. So, Response from, yan. Okay. May piyata siya. Okay. So, you can answer this. No, you can answer na lang itong psychological person. But basically, based on my ano, experience, no, conducting psychological first aid, 
Um, ang usual response ko from different audience, uh, may iba sa kanila, may negative sila na na-activate sa mind nila kapag narinig nila itong psychological first aid. Now, dudiretsyo yun ko na kagit. Ano ibig sabihin ng psychological first aid? Tatanggalin na din natin yung mga misconceptions about psychological uh, first aid. Ayan. So, uh, when we say psychological first aid, it's a description of humane, supportive response to a fellow human being who is suffering and who may need support. Um, paniniwala nila na itong psychological first aid kasi usually ginagawa siya to a very distressing na situation such as yung mga typhoon, uh, yung mga uh, disaster na pwede may sunog, armed conflict. Like ngayon, pwede rin to ngayon kasi meron tayong pandemic outbreak. So yan, psychosocial support. Um, psychological first aid aims to reduce initial distress, meet current needs, promote flexible coping, and encourage adjustment, no? Doon sa ating mga nakaka-experience ng distress. Uh, ang isa din sa mga dapat nating tandaan when it comes to psychological first aid, um, ito ay practical care and assistance. So, siya ay practical care and assistance lang po doon sa mga nakakaranas ng distress. Ayan, so let's um, zoom in pa kung ano ba yung mismong um, psychological first aid, yung hindi psychological first aid. So, kanina na-mention ko yung basic definition niya, no? Na-mention ko kanina providing practical care and support that does not intrude. Siguro ito, balikan ko lang din. <coughs> Always remember when it comes to providing psychological first aid or yung psychosocial intervention, practical care, dapat ma-feel nung binibigyan ninyo ng help na hindi ka intrusive. So, may mga situations na yung client ninyo, alam ninyo may problem siya. Or yung students ninyo, alam nila may problem sila, pero um, resistant sila. And it's something na, yun, na kailangan mong respect But, kailangan mo iparamdam dun sa tao na yun, no na parang you are there for them, if in case na kailanganin ka niya. Kasi, isa sa reason kung bakit sila resistant is because they are not ready. They are not prepared to disclose kung ano pa yung nafe-feel nila. And they are not actually sure kung ano din kasi yung kaya mong ma-provide, for example. Kaya, as uh, providers, kailangan natin mag-provide ng safe and inclusive uh, space to our students. Ma-feel nila na non-judgmental ka, ma-feel nila na talagang concern ka sa kanila. So if in case na maging resistant sila, na huwag natin ipipilitin sila, if of course na mag-come out sila or magsabi sila ng kanilang problem, no? Ayan. So, kasi nga, that's not insured, no? Kung baga, kailangan lang natin mapafeel na nandyan lang tayo sa kanila, if in case. Um, PFA also involves yung uh, protecting people from further harm. Kaya kapag alam natin na may mental health concerns, no, kunwari nakausap mo, may mental health concern, and you already know na hindi mo sakop itong gantong klase ng problem, di ba kasi sabi natin, ito ay practical care and assistance. No? So kung ito ay hindi nasakop ng iyong ano, no, ng competence, you need to refer that to uh, mental health professional. Mamaya madidiscuss natin yung basic principles na yung look, listen, and link. Ayan. So, helping people connect to information, services, and social support, comforting them, no? Making them, uh, help them feel calm. Ayan. Kasama yan dyan sa psychological first aid. So, kung yun yung involve ng, yun yung involvement ng PFA, ano naman yung hindi part ng PFA? So, it's not something that everybody who has been affected by a distressing event because there are people na after ng distressing event, kaya naman nila yung sarili nila. Again, hindi natin sila kinoforce, no? Na kailangan mo ng tulong kasi naka-experience ng distressing event. So, hindi agad-agad, no? Observe then. Not obtaining details of traumatic experiences and losses. Why? Kasi there's also a tendency na uh, ma-trigger natin sila, ma-open yung wound, at di natin alam kung paano yan ma-manage. Again, psychological first aid deals with practical care and assistance. Hindi tayo pwede mag-ask ng mga questions na pwedeng mag-trigger ng kanilang um, emotions na maglilid doon sa pag-breakdown nila. And psychological first aid is not treating. Hindi po tayo magpa-provide ng talagang um, yung intervention na uh, sinasabi na meron talaga siyang specific na tulad ng ginagawa ng psychologist. No? Yung ginagawa lang natin dito ay practical care and assistance. Okay? Not labeling or diagnosing. Hindi po tayo mag-label, mag-diagnose. Sa psychologist po yan o kaya sa psychiatrist. And it's not also counseling kasi yung counseling may mga sessions yan, may mga specific technique po yan. And usually gumagawa po niyan ay, yan, registered guidance counselors po. Yan, kung meron po kayo registered guidance counselors sa inyong school, no, 
sila po talaga yung una dapat din ninyong um, lapitan kung sakali meron kayo makitang mental health concerns sa inyong mga students. And then si guidance counselor, alam niya na po ang gagawin niya kung ito ay out of scope na din ang kanyang um, role, no? Ayan. So counseling, mga registered guidance counselors, o kaya naman pwedeng mga counseling psychologist. May ibang mga clinical psychologist tayo na trained din dyan, no? It's not therapy din, ang PFA. Uh, it's not debriefing. So maraming tawag dyan sa debriefing na yan. And usually hindi rin po talaga debriefing ito. Kasi again, hindi natin ipoprobe yung emotional aspect ng ating um, students. And it's not something those only professionals can do. No need naman na magkaroon naman kayo ng license para ikanda kang psychological first aid. Kasi basically po, ang psychological first aid ay practical care and assistance. So hindi kailangan ng lisensya. Kailangan lang maalam tayo sa kung anong dapat po nating gawin. Ayan. Next is, yan. So, principles of PFA, yung look, listen, and link. Now, let's proceed with look. Ayan. Mabilis lang naman din to, no? For look, since ito ay look, no? Kailangan natin i-assess yung situation. Um, ano kaya yung nangyari? Ayan. Kasi ito, yung kailangan yung ma-equip yung sarili nyo as teachers or as someone sa school, eh. Kasi there's also this possibility na kahit sino sa mga student ninyo, lalapit at lalapit sa inyo dahil sa nararanasan nila dahil sa pandemic outbreak. So, dapat familiar talaga kayo sa PFA or psychosocial intervention. So, try to look on um, information na like mag-ask kayo ng question siguro sa kanila na pwedeng mo. Ano yung nangyari? Pero hindi totally dun sa part na ano no, na um, ipoprobe mo yung emotion niya. Like, um, ano lang yung um, possible reason kung bakit siya, for example, lumapit sa inyo. Ano nangyari or Ano ba yung, kumbaga, referral question? Bakit siya lumapit sa inyo? No? Ano ang nangyari? So, bahala na siya mag-share nun. Pero as much as possible, uh, huwag na natin i-probe yung mas malalalim na parts. Baka mahirapan tayo i-manage kung sakali mag-breakdown sila. And it's really um, difficult pa naman as of this moment kasi nasa remote po tayo. No? Nasa remote um, condition tayo. No? Virtual. So, kung nas nasa room naman kayo, no? nasa online classes kayo, as much as possible, try to look for your students na possible na kailangan ng help. No? Kailangan din natin, syempre, ma-maximize yung um, kakayanan ng skwelahan natin na makapag-provide ng psychosocial intervention. Kasi yun nga, meron tayong mga guidance counselors sa school natin. Baka hindi naman natin na abibigyan sila ng ano. Um, alam ko marami silang trabaho, pero um, malaki kasi yung tulong nila kung sakaling meron kayong manotis sa yung mga students, no? Na kailangan yung i-refer sa kanila. So, try to notice kung sino sa mga students nyo yung kailangan ng help. Yan. Um, try to look for safety and security risks. Um, sino kailangan ng safe? Uh, safety. Ano kaya yung mga risks ng students ninyo ngayon, no? Um, something na kailangan din natin na take down, no? Kung sakaling i-refer din kasi natin sila. Uh, may physical injuries ba? Hopefully, wala naman, ano? Hopefully, wala naman. Kasi ang kinakatakot lang naman natin ngayon dito sa pandemic outbreak, yung pag-spread ng virus. Pero hindi natin masasabi kasi may mga physical injuries din na present, hindi natin masasabi. No? Um, kasi may mga situations tayo ngayon, dahil nga meron tayong pandemic outbreak, nakakulong sila sa bahay. So, dahil nakakulong sila sa bahay, hindi natin alam pala may mga family violence pala na involved dito. Kaya maaari may physical injuries na involved. No? Yan yung mga hindi natin na-anticipate na pwedeng mangyari. And then immediate basic and practical needs. Uh, ito yung parang pwede natin ahanapin. Ano ba yung kailangan ng student natin as of this moment? No? Ang ano ba yung kailangan mo? Ano ba yung maitutulong ko sa'yo? Diba? So, yun yung pwede mong i-ask sa kanya. And, and um, emotional reaction. Look for emotional reaction. Mukha ba siya nervous? Um, calm ba siya? Or hindi? Kung hindi siya calm, try to uh, calm your students no? by providing yung mga simple na relaxation technique. No? Um, something na pwede natin mahanap din, no? Or ma-provide. Try ko mag-provide later on. Ayan. So, dito sa look, ayan yung mga basic po natin, no? I-watch out natin sa ating mga students. For listen, so, um, syempre, pag meron tayong ganyan, no, lumapit na yung isang tao sa atin na meron problema, try to actively listen, no? Pero before tayo magkaroon ng actively, active listening, you know, we have to establish rapport muna. And to establish rapport, syempre you have to, kung hindi kayo totally kilala ng studyante, alam lang sa pangalan, so you have to introduce yourself. Sino ba kayo? And then, um, try to reassure your student na um, lahat ng pag-uusapan ninyo, it's highly confidential. It's between you and your student. 
para talaga mag-disclose din siya sa inyo, no? And syempre, hindi lang din sa, uh, for the sake na mag-disclose din talaga siya sa inyo, as much as possible po, hindi po talaga natin i-disclose yung information na yun, unless kailangan. Ayan. We need to protect our student. Ayan. So, we need to pay attention and listen actively to our students. Usually ito, may mga mga non-verbal gestures, pay and facial expression, pero ngayon, hindi natin siya magagawa kasi um, nasa remote tayo, eh. nasa remote or nasa virtual tayo. So, more likely ang ma-observe ninyo sa inyo, yung para language. So, when you say para language, yung tone of voice, yung pitch ninyo. So, sa way ng pakikipag-usap ninyo online sa student ninyo, doon, paano kaya nila mag-feel na ikaw ay interested? Paano kaya nila mag-feel na ikaw ay nag-care? Yung voice mo ba, assertive at strong? O kailangan ba malumanay para maging calm din sila? So, inonotice nyo din po yan. And then, you have to accept the uh, feeling of your student. Um, as much as possible, don't invalidate. May mga times po kasi na unaware tayo na invalidate po natin yung student natin. Do good naman yung intention natin talaga, no? To boost their uh, self-esteem, to boost their uh, confidence. Pero yun pala, unaware tayo, invalidating pala yun sa part nila. So for example, sabi natin, di ba, listening. So when you say listening, ang focus natin ay doon sa student or doon sa taong may problem. Yung conversation dapat nasa kanya, nasa kanya spotlight. Most of the time, tayo ay nakikinig lang talaga. Very less lang talaga yung ating pagsalita. Kung meron mang uh, pagsasalita, it's more of clarification lang. Clarification or asking questions, no? Na makakatulong sa iyo, no? Para maintindihan yung kausap mo. Ayan. So, dito, uh, para masabi natin na hindi natin siya na-invalidate, um, i-accept natin yung sinasabi niya. And as much as possible, we don't compare, no? We don't compare our experience to our students' experience or to other people's experience. For example, sabi niya, kaya mo yan, no? Kayang-kaya mo yan kasi alam mo ba, meron tayong isang estudyante din dito parang may ganyang similar na situation. Ito yung nangyari sa kanya, kinaya niya. So, kakayanin mo din yun. O kaya naman, sinabi mo na, ako nga, ito ang aking naging problema eh. So, yan, kaya mo yan kasi ito ang aking problema, mas mabigat na sa problema mo. Invalidating po siya. Yung conversation na shift na siya kanino, sa inyo na, or sa ibang tao, hindi na dun sa student mo. More likely, ano mangyari sa kanya, babalik siya dun sa shell niya, they don't open up na. Kasi they feel like, okay, hindi pala, parang alam mo yung feeling na parang nag-open up ka ng problem mo, hindi ka pinapakinggan. No? So, titigil ka na lang. So, yun, as much as possible, mag makikinig lang po tayo. Don't compare your experience and your other people's experience to your students. Then, calm the person in distress. Yan. So, i-ground you din siya sa kung anong nangyayari ngayon. So, pwede mo din sabihin sa kanya, okay, slow down, no? Mag-breathe muna tayo. Inhale. Exhale. Follow may ano, may may ganyan. So, may mga ganun tayong exercises. Pwede din ako mag-send ng links of breathing exercises later on. Then, ask about needs and concerns. Ayan. Ask about needs and concerns. Uh, help the person in distress to find solutions to their immediate needs and problems. You're there to help them. Help themselves. You're not there to provide advice. Isa din yung sa nakaka-invalidate ng feeling nila, no? Nag-share sila ng problem, nagbigay ka kagad ng advice. Ay, ang kailangan lang nila is someone to listen. Someone to who can understand their problem. Minsan ganun lang talaga kailangan nila, hindi na kailangan advice. So you can give advice if they ask you, no, na magkaroon ng advice. Pero as much as possible, di talaga. Kasi kapag tayo nagbigay ng advice, nag-work siya, magiging independent sa'yo yung student mo. Kung hindi naman nag-work, ikaw yung i-blame niya. So kailangan natin gawin is to help them. To help them help themselves, no? Magpo-provide ka lang ng mga possible solution sa kanila, sila yung magde-decide. Ayan. Next. Ayan. We have this. Ayan. Link. So, access information, connect with loved ones and social support, tackle practical problems, access services and other help. So, for example, alam mo na hindi na to sakop ng trabaho mo. Hindi sakop ng competency mo kasi alam mo baka maging detrimental pa sa kanya kapag magmamarunong ka halimbawa. Diba? Um, sabihin mo sa kanya na, Pwede ka maging honest kasi okay naman yun eh. Depende naman sa pag-deliver mo yun. Okay, as I can observe, as I observe, no, yung ganitong klase ng problem mo, alam ko kung sino makakatulong sa'yo. Okay lang ba sa'yo? So, hihingi ka ng permission sa kanya. Is it okay? I-refer kita rin sa ating guidance counselor kasi sila yung talagang expert sa ganyang klase ng problem. 
at baka i-link ka din niya sa iba pang uh, makatulong sa iyo no, para makapag-provide ng ganyang klase ng help no para appropriate yung care na ma-receive mo no at mabawasan talaga yung problema mo at hindi na maglido sa mental health concern so ganyan yun ibig sabihin ng link connect them to right people and it's okay to ano to to be honest no doon sa nararamdaman natin kung hindi na siya sakop ng ating um kakayanan again psychological first aid is providing practical care and assistance yun, na, na, nabigay mo na yung kabuuan ng PSA kapag i-refer mo na siya sa right people. Ayan. So, di ba kung titignan, wala naman tayong dapat na ikabahala kasi dito pinapakita naman, pinapaliwanag kung hanggang saan ang sakop o ano lang yung role natin. Ayan. Meron at meron kang magagawa. So, dito na papasok po ngayon yung supportive communication. So, diniscuss ko lang yung basic principle din sa psychological first aid. Pero dito, i-apply pa natin siya sa supportive communication, more likely nandito yan sa part ng listen, di ba? So, ano po ba yung supportive communication? Um, paano ba natin masasabi na supportive itong communication na to? Di ba? So, yan yung isang question na kailangan ninyong pag-isipan. Paano po ba natin yung masasabi? No? So, if you have any questions po, no, itatry po natin yung i-reserve, try natin yung sagutin later on. No? Try natin tapusin muna siya. So, yung supportive communication, since wala tayo kasi yung poll dito, kasi it's more of um, questions to, to, to just activate lang yung mind ninyo and to think or to ponder lang sa kung ano yung idea ninyo ng supportive communication. No? Ayan. So, ano nga ba yung supportive communication? So, yung supportive communication po, ayan. Supportive communication, yan, is... Yan, ma-feel dito yung pagiging clear, pagiging calm. Yan, pagiging attentive, meaning pag may nag-open up, nakikinig ka lang talaga sa kanya, hindi mo pinapakita yun sa kanya na parang maganyan ka. O kaya naman kahit virtual, na-observe natin to if you're not actually listening. Ito yung camera, no? Pero nakikita na parang nagsa-cellphone ka or nakatungo ka, no? Hindi supportive communication po yun. So, active ka din. So, when you say active, you can ask clarifying questions or probing questions that will help you understand kung ano pa yung sinasabi na kausap natin. Non-judgmental. So, when you are listening, hindi po tayo kagad nagkukunclude sa kung ano yung pwedeng mangyari. Ayan. Caring and patient. Hindi po natin sila may namadali na ano, tatapusin na natin to. Ano kasi tapos na yung school natin, eh, yung, school, yung time natin, okay lang ba nabalikan kita? So, parang hindi po siya basta-basta pinuputol lang ganun, ano, kasi may nag-open up. So, caring and patient, supportive ka. Honest. Sa pagiging honest na to as a uh, supporter, no? Um, sinasabi mo din yung nafe-feel mo dun sa sineshare niya para makapag-facilitate no, ng discussion. So, for example, nalulungkot ka sa sineshare niya, pwede ka naman maging honest dun, no? Um, pwede mo i-express yun sa kanya, no? Pwede din yun talaga. Uh, kasi nagiging congruent, yung tatawag naman, nagiging congruent ka dun sa nafe-feel mo. Pero as much as possible, i-minimize natin yun kasi ang spotlight nasa kanya nga. No? Pero possible naman na i-share mo din siya. Kung palagay mo makakapag-facilitate ng discussion ng usapin, yun yung dalawa. Makapag-establish pa ng good relationships, yun yung dalawa. And then yung supportive communication, it's actually structured. Kasi may mga guidelines din tayo to provide supportive communication. Hindi na siya basta-basta para kang nakikipagkwentuhan, may babato mo lang yung mga words ng basta-basta, i-detrimental yun kung ano-ano lang yung sasabihin natin, di ba? So, when it comes to supportive communication, since tayo ay nasa remote, no? meaning virtual yung ating ginagawa, ito yung mga mediums natin or yung remote communication natin. Pwede natin siya gawin through phone call, video calls, pwede SMS, WhatsApp, messages, o kaya naman Viber. Ayan. Ano po ba yung preferred ninyo? Siyempre, minsan yung prefer mo, maaari hindi prefer na kausap mo. So, sila din dapat yung tatanungin nyo. Ano ba prefer niya? May video ba? Or yung phone call lang? Medyo challenging lang po kung ito ay phone call kasi hindi mo nakikita yung facial expression niya. Hindi na nga face-to-face, -face, hindi mo pa makikita, no voice lang siya. Ayan, so yan yung challenging ngayon kasi remote communication tayo. So, these are the ways to prepare to provide support remotely. So, as much as possible, you have to check your environment. Maingay ba yung environment mo? Baka may mga manok, may aso, or something kang naririnig sa background, hindi makakatulong yun para makapag provide ng supportive communication sa student ninyo. As much as possible, look for something na meron kayong chance na magkarinigan. Prepare time, no? You have to spend time 
ito sa individual na to, hindi mo siya mamadaliin. And make sure na charge ang phone mo, charge ang computer mo. So, kasi mamaya nag-uusap kayo, lobat ka na pala, bigla na lang namatay. So, hindi na naging okay yung supportive communication ninyo. Ayan. Medyo challenging lang din po kasi, again, hindi natin nakakontrol minsan yung internet connection po natin. And then, yan, you have to access to network for phone call or internet na sana stable. And then, you can uh, ask for uh, contact details, pwede supervisor or kung sinong guardian, halimbawa, kung sino pwedeng uh, makatulong, no, kung sakali. Referral information, ayan. So, dapat meron kayong referral information. Para, for example, kausap mo na yung student mo, nangailangan siya kunwari ng guidance counselor, nangailangan siya, halimbawa, ng psychologist, kailangan niya pala ng directory. No? Usually, kung remote ito, meaning hindi sila nakatira doon sa lugar na malapit sila sa skwelahan nakatira sila mismo, mismo doon sa province, di ba? So, it's okay na meron kayong ready na directory para isasend mo na lang sa kanya yung link oh, and then sabihan mo siya, okay, try to look for mental health um, clinics near you. So, yan. Or try to check dito sa mga free psychosocial services din na baka makatulong sa'yo. Baka ako, nakakatulong lang ako sa'yo para mabawasan pero baka may mas makatulong pa sa'yo. Ito yung, ano, ito yung number. Yan. Deferral information, na? No? And then, latest information on local COVID-19 protocol para alam niyo din kung paano, syempre, makapag-provide ng advices to uh, help no, yung mga students niyo na hindi ma-prevent yung pag-spread ng virus. And then, initial contact. So, nandito na halimbawa na nag-usap na kayo. So, don't forget to have that introduction. Though, for example, kilala ka na naman ng student mo. Still, it's important na magkaroon tayo ng introduction. Kung hindi man introduction, yung simpleng hi and hello, yun yung introduction ninyo, kamusta? Na-observe ko, o to, lumapit ka sa akin, ano ang, ano, ano ang, anong meron sa atin, no? no? Yan. So, mga ganong kasi ng introduction. Then, set the duration of the call and what will happen. Pwede rin dito na para hindi rin uh, kayo talaga masyadong magtagal sa um, telepono kasi this is only practical care and assistance. Pwede mo na din i-diretsyo sa student na, okay, um, ako ay hindi mental health professional, pero kaya kitang providean ng psychosocial intervention, no? Um, more likely, yung gantong, yung gantong klase ng practical care and assistance, pwedeng mag-last ito ng one hour or more than one hour. So, parang pag sinabi mo sa kanya, nasiset sa mind na, ah, okay, usually one hour lang to, kaya one and a half hour. So, alam din sa sarili niya kung paano yung pacing ng pag-share niya. No? Pwede mo din ma-share dito ano yung mga possible ways na Pwede mangyari. So, pwede mo sa kanya i-mention na, okay, kung sakaling meron tayong makita na mental health concerns na mag-arise mula doon sa sasabihin mo, um, sana payagan mo ako na ma-share ito doon sa right person na, na pwede makatulong sa'yo. Para syempre, mabawasan yung problema mo. Something like that. Manonotice mo na para lang kayo nagkukwentuhan, ano? Pero makikita mo may structure yung sinasabi kung meron siyang pinapatunguhan. Di ba? Ayan. So, dito sasabihin mo din yung access, uh, i-access mo yung safety and physical well-being ng tao na to. Meron ka bang kasama sa bahay? Importante yon kasi kung wala siyang kasama sa bahay, more likely prone ito sa mental health concerns. Lalo na yan kung meron tayong pandemic outbreak, meron iba dito talagang nilalamon sila ng kalungkutan, nilalamon sila ng problema nila. So, to assess the safety and physical well-being, you have to ask them, meron ka bang kasama sa bahay? Sino yung kasama mo sa bahay? Nakakapag-usap ba kayo? Alam niya ba itong nangyayari sa'yo? So, kung hindi niya alam, di ba, pwede ka mag-suggest doon na oh, pwede mong i-open up yan sa kanya kasi lumalabas sa pag-aaral na bla 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 na ito ay nakatulong para makapag-recover ka sa nararamdaman mo. And there's nothing wrong naman kapag in-open up natin ito. Di ba? It's actually a sign of bravery pa nga kapag nag-open up ka doon sa yung family. Pero you have to understand din kasi baka iba din yung dynamics sa bahay nila kasi maaaring abusive pala yung parents abusive pala yung mga kapatid. So, ganun siya. Kaya nagtatanong din tayo, no? I-assess natin yung safety and physical well-being. So, kung medyo nagiging mabilis ako, you can actually replay itong video na to. Ayan. So, gather more information, no? Sa initial contact natin na makakatulong for referral eventually. Now, let's proceed with during the call. Alam ko na mention ko na din to halos, no? So, sa supportive, ano natin, sabi natin, supportive communication skills, di ba? Uh, dito, kailangan ma-identify natin kung ano ba yung help na kailangan ng ating kausap. And dapat ma-feel na dito yung tayo ay concerned, clear, di ba? Sa sinasabi natin, maramdaman niya na talagang willing tayo to help. Ayan. 
yung kaninang na-mention ko na supportive communication, nandiyan na siya, papasok. Ayan. Mag-provide tayo ng practical care, di ba? And assistance. Then, assess what help you can give and what you cannot. Kanina sa na-mention ko na initial contact, di ba? Nag-set ka naman na ng um, expectations, no? Kasama yan dyan. During the call, yun na yun. Sinasabi mo sa kanya yan. Ano yung in-expect niya? Ano yung in-expect mo? Ano yung pwede mo nang ma-provide? Kasi kailangan aware din siya. Hindi tayo pwedeng yung magsasabi na, kunwari, i-diagnose mo siya, oh, nga mula sa sinasabi mo, mukhang nga may depression ka. Hindi po tayo pwede mag-diagnose kasi alam niyo po, as psychologist, marami po kaming ginagawa bago po namin ma-diagnose ang isang tao. At saka kaming mga psychologist, may mga kanya-kanya po kaming specialization. So for example ako, nag-take po ako ng board examination. Um, Nakapag-undergo po ako ng mga training sa counseling and psychotherapy. Pero specialization ko po na pinili din ay more on sa industrial setting. So mas focus ko po yung mental health sa industrial. Pero may idea din ako on how to provide yung mga ganito klaseng psychosocial support sa school, sa community. Pero kasi iba yung level ng clinical eh. Individual talaga yan. Micro level po ito. Diagnosis po ito talaga. So sila po talaga expert dyan. So kaya talaga, um, hindi po tayo nagda-diagnose niyan. No? Kasi talagang gumagawa dapat yan ay someone na train. Kasi meron po talaga adverse impact ito. Once na no, dinagnose mo isang tao nang hindi talaga yun yung kanyang a diagnosis. Nagkakos ng fear sa kanya, na-identify niya yung sarili niya dun sa mismo diagnose na psychological disorder. Minsan nagkakaroon ng self-fulfilling prophecy do, na pigmalion effect to the point na dahil naniniwala sila may problema sila, naging lang yung problema. Something like that. So, try to avoid diagnosing our clients without sufficient um, evidence. At saka kung wala tayong training doon. Again, dapat mental health professional po ang gumagawa niyan psychologist or psychiatrist. Even psychometricians are not allowed to diagnose, okay? Ayan. And then, um, be honest. No? Be honest. No? Kung ano lang yung kaya ninyo, may provide. At para safer din yung sa part ninyo, no? hindi kayo ma-technical. Ayan. So, supportive communication skills involve asking appropriate and relevant questions and identifying common and se severe emotional reactions, no? Ngayon, ano-ano kaya yung mga ano na yun? Ano-ano kaya yung mga um, questions na pwede makatulong sa atin po identify kung sila ba ay severe na or nandun pa lang sa common na reaction? Ito po yung makakahelp sa inyo, no? Ayan, so, ang common po na reaction natin sa COVID, ayan. So, pag common reaction yan, fear, anxiety, or symptoms of anxiety, may anger, may confusion, may sadness, may grief. Common po yan sa COVID-19. Masasabi natin na itong common na to, nag-transition na sa severe kapag ito na yung nag-appear po. Continuous na disturbed sleep, or appetite, unable to function normally and care for cell, dito na papasok yung dysfunctionality niya. Dysfunctionality to the point na um, yung sarili niya, hindi niya na ma-protect, uh, hindi niya na ma makapag-function, hindi makaligo, hindi makapag-toothbrush, madalas nakakulong lang siya, nagiging dysfunctional, no? na pwede mag-influence sa kanyang occupational aspect. Hindi na rin makapagtrabaho ng maayos. Kung siya ay student, hindi na, makapag, hindi na siya makapag-perform ng tama sa kanyang um, pinag-aaralan. So, to notice may significant changes ng students ninyo, lalo na yung mga achiever, di ba? Um, before, okay naman ang kanyang grades. Pero this time, na-notice mo na bumababa yung grades niya. It's something na kailangan natin i-look out. Kasi talagang baka may problema yung bata at nagmamanifest sa kanyang academic performance. Ayan, no? Uncontrolled or aggressive behavior threatens or acts to harm self or others. Potential harm sa sarili. Diba? Ayan, mga alam sa sadal thoughts. Ayan. Harmful coping strategies. So instead na i-confront yung mga gantong klase ng problem, some of them, no? They tend to have maladaptive coping strategies such as yung pag inom ng alcohol, pagyoyosi, and sana naman po wala pong drugs, no? Ayan, o kaya too much exposure sa mobile legends or yung too much game, no? Masama din yun kasi dapat in moderation lang din po siya. Ayan. Um, ano pang mga harmful coping strategies? Too much eating, ayan, that might uh, affect your physical health. Ayan. So, syempre pag too much eating, naapektuhan ng ating mental health din. Kasi meron tayong mga studies na may connection ang gut o yung stomach natin doon sa ating mental health. Kasi yung serotonin, hindi lang pala ito um, 
na-release ating neurotransmitter dito sa brain natin, may mga research na nagsasabi na ang serotonin ay napoproduce din sa ating gut. So, we need to protect our gut, no? Kasi malaki ang influence niya, no? Para maging okay ang ating well-being. Kung kakain tayo ng mga junk food, ng mga pagkain na mayaman sa carbs, no? nag enhance yung mga microorganisms or yung mga bacteria pa, sorry, mga bacteria sa gut natin, no? Na nakaka-apekto doon sa ating mental health na hindi maganda. Ayan. Then, chronic health problems, mental illness, or disorders. So, dyan natin makikita kung common na or severe siya. So, normal na may fear, common na may anxiety, hindi siya normal kapag may dysfunctionality na sa kanyang personal life, na apekto ng kanyang trabaho or ang kanyang academic performance. Ang kanyang social interaction, hindi na siya nakikipag-usap sa ibang tao, we never do din ang sarili niya, may impairment. So, yun yung common, yung dalawang pinaka-importante po. Kaya kapag magtatanong kayo dun sa estudyante ninyo, okay, meron ka bang nakakausap, di ba? Um, share mo ba sa kanila? Kadalasan ba? Ikaw ay nasaan? So, yung mga idea na na-mention ko, i-reframe nyo lang yung mga question para ma-identify nyo kung severe ba ito or common siya. Ayan. Try natin pag may time pa tayo sa Q&A later on. Ano? And then, pasok tayo sa next natin, knowing how, 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 knowing how to calm someone when they are in distress. Ayan. Na-mention natin yun kanina, di ba, sa supportive um, communication skills, pero mabilisan lang. So, dito, kung nandito na kayo sa pag-uusap, no? naluan rin natin ng PFA skills, no? Kung tayo ay may possibility na nanonotice na lumalayo na yung usapan doon sa mismo problem, you can gently interrupt the person. Okay, sige. Okay lang, babalik tayo dun sa ano, na clarify lang natin, no? Ito kasi yung nakikita kong problema dahil dito sa sinabi mo, no? Um, sabi mo kanina, ito yung lablala sa mismo problem. Tama ba ako na ito ay, ito yung nakikita kong problema? It seems like ito yung ganito. So parang, kina-clarify mo, minimake sure mo na naiintindihan mo din siya. Ini-interrupt mo siya. Tapos, kasi kung lalayo yan, babalik mo siya dapat din sa mismo problem. So, so ito yung problem. So, tama ba? Ito yung ating dapat natin ganito. No? Hindi mo na kailangan sabihin na ikaw kasi lumalayo ka eh. No, hindi na kailangan na sabihin yan. Ano? I-mention mo lang sa kanya, tapos kung saan na yung babalik. No? Yan. Ask the person's name kung hindi mo siya kilala talaga. Validates feelings several times. Yes, it's okay to not be okay. It's normal na nakakaramdam ka ng fear ngayon because of this ganitong situation. It's okay na nagagalit ka ngayon. Recognize that anger. Hindi tayo magbibigay ng advice na forgive them, forgive them. Again, iba yung, first, yung sense of forgiveness, na, forgiveness natin, hindi agad-agad. It takes time. Minsan yung iba kapag nag sila before nila nabibigay yung forgiveness. Iba-iba tayo ng pacing. So yan, again, stop comparing yourself. Stop giving advice. Okay? Listen lang. So, basta more on, affirmation tayo. Ayan. Then, listen patiently without interrupting. No? As much as possible without interrupting. Pero, i-interrupt natin siya if in case na medyo lumalayo na siya. Okay, sa pinag-uusapan, sa problem. O kaya naman, kung gusto mong i-clarify, gently interrupt. Pero, as much as possible, try to listen without interruption. Ayan. Be assured that there is help. No? But, try to avoid false reassurance naman. Oo, meron tayong mga libre na dito sa school, libre ng mga psychosocial services. Yung pala, hindi naman pala um, enough yung psychosocial service or psychosocial support yung sa school ninyo, no? So, nabigay ko talagang false hope. So, as much as possible, alam mo din yung mga available resources na meron ka para hindi ka rin makapag-provide ng false hope sa mga kausap mo. Then, check for safety and security by asking where the person is. Nasaan ka ba ngayon? Nasa bahay ka ba? May kasama ka ba? Diba? Yan yung mga na-mention ko kanina. Kasi mas malaki ang chances na magkaroon ng harm sa sarili kapag wala po siyang kasama. Ayan. The next. Ayan. Um, dadaan pa rin tayo dun sa part na to. Yung guides them to calm breathing. Ayan. So, okay. So, nakikita mo na distress siya. Follow my breathing. So, inhale. Exhale. May mga, may mga online tayo na mga scripts, for example, sa mga relaxation technique. O kaya naman may mga online tayo ng mga may music na may guided meditation to help the person calm. Ayan. So, let them accept what they feel no? by affirming them. Shows empathy and understanding. Ayan. Gives confidence and praises action. So, yung sa praises ng action, meron naman makukwento yan na, okay, mula dyan sa nangyari, ano yung ginawa mo? Kung nga may na-mention siya na ginawa niyang maganda, alam mo yung ginawa mo na yan, katatangan niya. No? I, I admire you for doing that. So, 
kailangan natin silang i-phrase din para magkaroon, ma-boost sila, ma-empower sila kasi sa PFA may kasama din ito pag-instill ng hope no, at the end ng session. Then you can also uh, gather more information, focus on strengths. Bakit kailangan din natin mag-focus doon sa strengths? Okay, pag natin-distress ka, ano yung mga bagay na nag enjoy ka? Ano yung parang effortless mong gawin at nag enjoy kang gawin? Kasi yun yung mga strengths niya, yun yung maaaring paghubutan ng self-care activities no? na pwede mong i-suggest. Then ends the call well kapag okay na. And usually before natin i-end yung call, kailangan natin i-summarize para maramdaman ng kausap natin na naiintindihan natin sila. So tama ba? Ito yung mga nangyari na no? bago natin ibaba. Ito yung papagawa ko sa'yo. Di ba? Lalo na kung may homework sila. No? At ipapagawa ko. No? Before ko sabihin yan, sabihin mo sa akin kung tama ba yung pagkakaintindi ko para bago tayo matapos, di ba? Um, na nasigurado ko na naiintindihan talaga ko. And then, yan, calming them, um, someone in distress, ito yung mga dapat nang tandaan, no? Keep the tone of your voice calm and soft. Stay calm yourself. Siya ay hindi kalmado, tapos ikaw ang tataranta. Talaga, okay ka lang ba? So, more likely, pas na kayo matataranta, mas lala siyang makataranta. So, try to calm yourself, no? Ayan. Assure the person you are listening, No? So, pwede mong i-repeat yung kanyang name every time na magsistick ka para lang maano yung attention niya. Ayan. Encourage calm and mindful breathing. Ayan. Encourage the person to connect with the ground or chair they are standing or sitting on. Ito nakakatulong to sa relaxation technique no? or guided meditation. Then, dito sa supported communication involved din dito yung knowing when and how to make referrals. Link din siya. No? So, kanina nakita natin dito Yung ask niya po pre question, look yun, look. Yung sumunod dito, how, uh, knowing how to calm someone, part siya ng link, uh, ng, ng, ano, ng listen. Ng listen, di ba? So, look, listen, and link. Nandito na tayo sa link kasi referral na siya. So, um, sa ending ending ng call natin, syempre hindi naman basta ikukol yung pagtatapos ng call yan, di ba? Sabi ko kanina, isa-summarize natin siya para malaman kung nakinig talaga tayo. Pwede rin magpa-homework ka kasi huwag sasuggest ka ng self-care tips. But at the same time, kung kailangan talaga ng um, referral, dito na papasok yun, no? Kung papunta na doon sa ano, about to end na siya, check mo, okay, kamos naman yung naramdaman mo ngayon dahil nag-share ka sa akin? Uh, how does it feel na na-share mo siya? Yun. Um, Siyempre, merong difference yun, no? hopefully. And then, yun, check any agreed action points. Kaya nga tatanungin natin sila doon sa summary, no? kung tama yung pagkakaintindi mo. Na para talagang na-make sure na naiintindihan mo talaga sila. And then, kung kailangan talaga, may nag-resurface talaga na possible mental health concern, referral information is needed. Ayan. Then, mag-ask kayo ng permission sa kanya. Then, be encouraging and give hope. Ayan. So, after the call, ano nang gagawin mo? Don't forget na kailangan po natin ng follow-up sa kanya. Hindi po yung tapos lang yun ng basta-basta. Follow-up do sa referral. Pwede mo kausapin yung psychologist. Kamusta na yung nirefer ko? Kamusta naman po siya? Ayan. Or pwede yung estudyante mo ang tanungin mo din. Ayan. So, discuss this with the supervisor. Pwede dun sa class advisor niya kung kamusta siya. Or syempre, pwede mo din tanungin yung estudyante kung okay lang matanungin yung advisor niya. Or kung hindi talaga pwede, edi yung estudyante. Ayan. No? And, ah, uh, I would like to end this with this quote. I'm so interested dun sa Q&A portion natin kasi may nag-raise ng hand kanina. Um, and basic lang din kasi sa psychological um, intervention or psychosocial intervention. So, kaya, kailangan ko mag-entertain ng question from all of you guys, no? So, here, now, I would like to end this with this beautiful um, quote from Eric Erickson. He said, The more you know yourself, the more patience you have for what you see in others. Kaya, as you noticed, di ba, earlier, nag-share ako sa inyo ng mga, um, ng mga guidelines, no, on how to understand yourself, di ba? Uh, refresher sa mental health, di ba? Uh, kasi it's important na kayo as provider, um, kailangan inaalagaan po ninyo yung sarili nyo. You need to know yourself. no You need to be patient with yourself then Para yun, magdaraide din yan sa mga tao na bibigyan natin ng tulong. Kasi nga sabi, di ba, you can feel from an empty cup. no Kaya yon the more you know yourself, the more patience you have for uh, for what you see in others. So unahin po natin ang sarili natin no? uh, before tayo mag-provide ng help sa ating mga student. That's the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you so much for, and I think ready na po. Thank you. Julie. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you, Miss Rian. That was short but very clear, very clear and informative. So I can say because um, I have journey with the with this series of mental health um, organized by PAP and the Don Bosco Press. This is a very good sequel of the last session because um, we ended up like questioning. There's one question like, how can they help if they they themselves need help? So eto na yung sagot dun sa question nila na yun. So, uh, yeah. So, guys, um, fellow educators, keep your questions coming. And, yeah, um, the first topic kasi, Ms. Rian, is about providing structure, no, and scope of creating a mental health. So, parang backbone of creating a mental health program. The second mm -hmm. session is um, the creating the mental health program itself. And eto na, eto na yung meat talaga ng mental health program. This is a part of the mental health program. And I'm glad that you have shared very clear points, no? So, yeah. So, pero I'm sure may mga questions dyan. Questions. Some additional, yeah. Oo. So, if you, want to po, if you want to post your question on the question and answer, you can type it there. Or if you want to raise your question by yourself, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, so, ayan, baka nag-iisip pa sila ng question. <laughs> but, yeah. uh -oh. but, but siguro it's very clear din kasi yung mga explanations mo yan. But uh, I would like to acknowledge yung mga participants natin, madami tayo all over the, I think, I'm not sure if there's Mindanao, but there's a lot in NCR, Luzon, and Visayas also. And we have one, I think, from Washington, no? And yeah, to mention some from Cavite, Eloilo, Vigan, and Zambales. So yeah, I think this is a... Um, ang magandang naidulot ng pandemic talaga, naging reachable ang mga webinars na ganito, no? Kasi before, it's like so hard to organize a seminar because of the proximity, no? To get the speakers. Yeah, yes. so may, may maganda din and talagang naidulo to sa pandemic. Yes, uh, no? uh, dahil nga nag because of this, ano, yung mental health um, cases natin nag-increase siya. So parang nagkaroon ng need yung mga mental health professional talaga na kailangan natin gawin to para sa bayan. Kaya nagpo-provide tayo ng mga mm -hmm. free mental health webinars. And it's something na sobrang useful sa ating ano, um, mga nanonood. No? Kasi lahat talaga ay talagang affected ng mental health, no? Yan, lahat pwedeng magkaroon ng mental health problems, no? At sobrang rich, na-rich talaga natin sila. Totoo, totoo. Um, even the remote provinces, talaga malaking tulong din tong webinars. And they don't have to pay, di ba, for any amount. Kasi before, seminars are, you know, getting expensive like 6,000 pataas. So medyo hirap talaga yung mga struggling ones to attend seminar. Um, so far, wala pang questions, but there are a lot of comments. Siguro, that's because nga, very clear and realistic yung mga examples na binigay mo. Um, siguro to maximize our time, Ms. Rian, parang na-mention mo kanina na if we have time, may mga ibibigay kang samples for, for the participants or for us. Like, yes. So, like yung, uh, ano, may, um, sa ground, uh, ito yung sa part ng, uh, Yung grounding techniques, for example, ito bibigay ko yung PDF na pwede nilang i-download na yan. Ito i-upload ko na. Uh, share now. Ayan, okay. Share now. Mm -hmm. So, ang bilis, no? <laughs> and wow. then, also have this Thank you very app. much. Ang bilis. Ayan. And then, I'll also try to share na din yung nakuha ko from, ano, yung baka maka-help to sa inyo, no? I-share ko na lang din. Yung sa mental health kasi ng mga project. Yan, ito yung five ways to well-being. Ito yung mismong shiner ko kanina na parang model. Ito yung mismong um, PDF niya na expanded. Mm -hmm. Talagang meron talaga siyang um, evidence-based. No? Oh, mas detailed. Ito. Mas oh. detailed siya. Parang sa 70 plus na, ano siya, na, okay. na pages. No? And uh, I'll try to share lahat ng possible na pwede kong ma-share sa inyo. <laughs> Ayan. Habang wala Ayan. pa naman. That would be good, no? Uh -oh. so well it's part of equipping them no um we have a uh, medyo kompleto tayo meron tayong school admin um class advisors no mga frontliners natin subject teachers even non teaching personnel no and we have parents here who are listening to us and other school administrators so maganda yung mixture ng ating participants 
Um, kasi when we create a mental health program, diba, kailangan natin ng tulong sa iba't ibang mga um, portion ng school, like non-teaching or the mm-hmm. teachers man yan or the, mod- the the administrator so we are i think well represented and i think they're going to be ready to create their own psychosocial support with what you gave us no so thank you for oh, that uh, i will also upload na ngayon yung uh, preventing suicide uh, community engagement toolkit kasi parang ito uh, parang okay. yan yeah, yesterday parang nabahala ako na isa sa mga, may isang student um namatay siya due to suicide and it's because uh-huh. of nag-stop siya ng pag-aaral niya. And it's something na parang important ngayon na ma-address yung, mga, yung suicide na yan. So kaya ito siya share ko yung toolkit uh, about preventing suicide, a community engagement toolkit. Okay. So parent, lalo na 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 dyan, okay. malaking love po ito sa inyo. No? MH Gap, from so, more si- yeah. yeah. So siguro while you're sharing, my question na po tayo, Ms. Rian. So okay. yeah. So first question from Sister Escolange. How could we hold students who are about to stop schooling due to many requirements? The performance tasks are stressful for them according to the parents. Yeah, how could we like help them be our students pa rin, in spite of all these difficulties? Mm-hmm. Yun lang yung nagiging issues natin ngayon. Ano? Um, isa sa mga ginagawa kasi, for example, kami sa PAP, um, yung meron kaming... Sp- Um, teaching special interest group, no? Doon tinuturuan yung mga teachers on how to try na um, i-evaluate, i-evaluate yung syllabus nila. Like, um, since meron tayong pandemic outbreak, hindi natin ipipressure yung sarili natin as teachers to finish yung syllabus na yon. Kasi nga, it's very impossible sa mga students to to finish the syllabus. Ngayon, ang pinag, isa, panag, uh, pinag-usapan namin during that ano, discussion, Um, alin kaya dito sa part ng syllabus na to yung non-negotiable topics? Na yun yung magsuspend tayo ng talagang time kasi non-negotiable siya. So by removing yung other topics na non-essential at magpupokus tayo dun sa mga non-negotiable topics, somehow, nare-redesign natin yung alin yung pwede natin ipagawa dito sa mga students na to. I think um, yun yung important ngayon. We have to re-evaluate our syllabus. Um, try to check kung ano yung mga non-negotiable topics para ma-redesign natin yung paggawa ng mga um, uh, pagbibigay ng homeworks, pagbibigay ng quizzes, o kaya ng projects, no? Ayan. Hopefully, I answered yung question then. Oo, totoo. Um, because in online learning, parang there's a need talaga no, for redesign or making an adaptive learning system. Kasi sila yung priority natin eh, not our curriculum or whatever we want to te- teach them. And we have another question ma'am, no? from... Ay, sorry, sorry. I, I think din kasi sorry. it's important din na gawin din nila yun. Um, hindi lang din yun for the student eh. It's also for the teacher din. Mm-hmm. Mababawasan din yung load nila doon. Kasi syempre, di ba, ang teachers din sobrang nahihirapan din mag-adjust ngayon. Lalo na sa mga non-digital natives natin. Nag-adjust din sa paggamit ng computer. Yes. So that's why we have to to adapt din talaga, to redesign, to re-evaluate, alin ang non-negotiable part ng syllabus natin na yun lang ibibigay natin sa student natin. Ayan. Yeah, okay. And siguro we we encourage teachers to be advocates no, for the students uh, in terms of this thing. Okay, another question po from Mirna Rabina. Ma'am Ria, may question po is, paano po nyo mabibigyan ng assessment ang batang laging kinakagat ang ball pen sa tuwing may discussion? May kaugnayan po ba ito sa mental health ng bata? Hmm, yung bata na laging okay. kinakagat ang May kaugnayan po ba? Uh, maaring ano lang naman ito. Mm-hmm. Na, uh, pwede uh, manifestation lang na siya ay uh, parang na-anxious o kaya naman pwede lang nabo-boring. Nab- It's something na parang hindi natin kagad malalaman kung sila ay may mental health concern, maari kinakabahan, but not necessarily na meron siyang anxiety disorder, no? So, uh, yung pagkagat ng ball pen na yun, kasi maaring may ano lang siya, um, talagang pwedeng, pwedeng kinakabahan or natatakot or pwedeng mannerism niya, we don't know, no? So, kaya yeah. important din na nunotice mo ko, for example, to sa student mo, after ng class, pwede mo siyang kausapin lang. So, how are you? Kasi yung simpleng yun, parang entry point na siya. How are you, no? Na-notice ko na parang, wag mo naman i-mention na siguro yung sa ball pen. Parang, parang gusto na katang kamustahin, no? How are you na, no? Ayan. So, yun. Mas maging uh, active tayo ngayon sa mga student natin na na-observe natin sa online class. 
Ayan. So, entry point na lang yun, ma'am, to, to us yung bata para mas ma-validate din natin kung ano talaga ang nati-feel niya. Ayan. Okay. Baka naman manirism nga lang. No? Um, okay, there's another question. Um, if a teacher has anxiety disorder or panic attack symptoms, will his or her condition be a constraint for him or her to provide psychosocial intervention? And follow-up question, what can you suggest to the school admin as to the role of the teacher in this case? Okay. Well, if yung ating um, teacher ay meron talagang, uh, yan, meron siya halimbawa yung uh, na nakalagay dito. Ay, at yeah, may panic um, attack um, symptoms and anxiety disorder. So question ko lang, yung anxiety disorder na, is it debilitating ba talaga? Or is it really something na nakaka-impair na dun sa function niya sa teacher? Kasi a uh, misconception din natin na kapag ang isang tao may psychological disorder, para bang totally hindi na siya nakakapag-function. Hindi naman ganun, no? May mga, kaya nga, dapat continuous talaga yung ating uh, mental health support, no? Like, for example, oh, meron kang um, psychological disorder, pero you are actually following uh, your, ano, yung, yung dapat pinapagawa ng psychologist, you are taking your meds, no? So, ibig sabihin, nakakapag-function ka ng maayos kahit meron kang um, anxiety disorder. So, ibig sabihin, pwede ka makapag-provide kung feeling mo naman okay ka. But for example, meron ka talagang panic attack symptoms. Again, babalik tayo dun sa, sa sinabi ko kanina, parang you can feel, uh, you can feel from an empty cup. So, it's okay to be honest. No? It's okay to be honest. Kung palagay mo ikaw yung teacher na um, hindi talaga makakatulong tong pag-provide mo ng help kasi you're not actually okay, pwede mong i-mention nga na, okay, um, i-refer kita sa someone na pwede makahelp sa'yo. Ayan. So, hindi naman pwedeng, hindi naman talaga siya requirement na mag-provide ka kagad ng psychosocial intervention kung hindi ka talaga totally okay. Kasi kami din, for example, na psychologist, kapag overwhelmed din kami ng problem, and palagay namin kailangan namin mag-take ng cost, nag-take talaga kami ng cost. Kasi hindi namin mapoprovide yung best services sa clients namin. So, ayun. Kaya kailangan po talaga na aminin natin sa sarili natin kung okay tayo o hindi. Kailangan natin siyang i-refer sa iba. Kung, you know. So, sa role naman ng uh, school administrator, at ba, baka nasagot ko na siya yata, ano, yung sa ano, role nila. Tama ba? Yeah, okay. I think that's the importance of referral, eh, no? On, pag hindi mm -hmm. natin scope talaga, we have to refer. And don't be afraid or ashamed to refer. Kaya tayo may iba't ibang specialization. So, let's just help each other. Okay. Yes, yan na yun. Question. na mention mo, ma'am, sa specialization. Kasi, for example, ako din as industrial psychology major din. For example, pag sobrang clinical siya and it's something na not work-related yung nakita kong problem ng client, hindi na ako magpa-provide ng kanyang help kasi ako ang specialization ko, work-related stress eh. Occupational mm -hmm. stress. So, ibibigay ko siya sa clinical psychologist. And it's not something na less ako na psychologist kapag inamin ko siya. Kaya tama po si Miss Juliet doon, don't be afraid to refer it to someone. Yeah. Mm -mm. Tsaka less stress pa din yun sa'yo. Yes. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Share the stress. <laughs> okay. <True. laughs> Another question, um, how to handle students who believes more on the information they are getting from Google or YouTube than with teachers? And most of the time, they tend to argue with their teachers with the information they have learned from Google or YouTube versus information or lessons given by teacher. Oh, <laughs> okay. Ang hirap. Yan yung mga sadyado na matigas ang ulo, no? Yan yung mga resistant hmm. talaga. Um, baka hindi na sa teacher yung dapat na magsabi sa kanya noon. Pwedeng um, third person na like, for example, yung guidance counselor na talagang mm -hmm. pwedeng makapag-provide talaga sa kanya or makapagbigay ng linaw doon sa nararamdaman niya. Siguro para hindi lang maging resistant yung bata. So alam mo, um, magbigay ka lang mm -hmm. halimbawa ng um, advice like um, just to make sure lang na tama tayo dito sa information na nakuha mo sa YouTube, no? Um, I think it's important na magpa-check din tayo or uh, lapit tayo doon sa guidance counselor. Sabihin mo nang in a very ano din, calm manner para din siya matakot. So, si guidance counselor na yung magsasabi doon. Ayan, sa kanya kung mm -hmm. ano yung naging niya. So, pwedeng gano'n naman. No? Kasi baka sa iyo talaga hindi na siya makikinig. Ibang tao na talaga yung ano, no? uh, magsasuggest sa kanya. Kasi minsan gano'n yun eh. The more na parang kinoforce na, parang kinoforce natin yung palagay natin tama sa kanila, the more sila nagiging resistant din. So, minsan okay lang na parang i-offer mo lang, mahala ka maniwala or hindi, pero parang ini-encourage mo siya na lumapit doon. Ayan. Mm -hmm. 
So, yan yung mga tinatawag nating smart aleck, no? Parang mas marunong pa sila talaga sa'yo. But tama ka po, parang if you counter that, talagang walang ending yung pag-aaway nyo inside the classroom. So, yeah. Um, siguro, it's also important, lalo na ngayon remote learning, to empower the parents also, no? Sa mga ganyang situation. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, sa mga parents naman talaga kailangan po ngayon mayroon tayong pandemic outbreak. So, be ano din po tayo para uh, be cautious din tayo sa mga nararamdaman ng mga anak po ninyo. Kung naman na-notice yun na wini-withdraw nila sarili nila ang sarili nila sa inyo, di ba? Less talk na siya. So, basta po nakita niyo yung significant change ng behavior niya, try to, ano, to reach out. No? Kasi sa, sa kanila, Mahirap talaga mag-ask ng help minsan. Lagi kami na suggest na it's okay to ask for help. Pero in reality po kasi, it's really difficult to open up yourself, no? To someone. Lalo pa, you're not really sure kung open ba talaga siya, non-judgmental siya, safe ba talaga siya, di ba? So kaya, yun, important na we reach out, no? Para ma-alibate na din yung problem nila kung mag-iisip sila lang at sila kung din. Totoo. Um, siguro si Sigondahan ko yung yan, no, Miss Rian. I'd like to appeal to the to the parents, no, kasi very important yung role nila ngayon. Uh, sometimes kahit quiet tong mga anak natin, we have to initiate somehow eh kasi sayang tong work from home natin. Eh. Let us maximize the the situation right now para maka-reach out tayo sa kanila kasi it seems that they do not want to talk but really they have a lot of things to to ask you and to tell you kung Uh, siguro pakita nyo din na you are there for them. So, ganun. <laughs> Yun ko. Uh, yeah. So, um, wala na tayong question. Uh, ayan. So, I think marami ng mga enriching PDF na pinadala si Ms. Rian. Um, I think yung survey natin kanina na maraming happy pe- participants ngayon siguro happier na sila kasi marami silang questions na nasagot no at mga fear nila of you know helping or giving psychosocial support parang parang feeling ko pag pag alis ko dito sa webinar na to I'm more confident na because of this tip so thank you for that saka may handouts to review all of these things we can never be as fluid as you Miss Rian but we can try to be you know <laughs> the best uh-huh. version of this webinar that you gave us yeah um Thank you siguro so much. Uh, siguro wala nang questions so siguro any last words last points you would like to give our participants well um yun yung psychosocial um intervention again ang ganda ng question kanina talaga na parang you don't need to you don't have to force yourself no to provide psychosocial intervention if you feel like you're not ready, no? Kasi syempre, meron ka din uh, personal struggles mo. It's okay to be honest din. Na i-refer natin siya doon sa kung sino ang tao na available or pwedeng um, makapagbigay ng help doon sa, for example, sa student ninyo, no? Um, okay lang talaga na maging honest tayo doon sa part na yun. And, and siguro, ito din, we need to um, share this um, knowledge doon sa mga colleagues din natin kasi mas magiging madali sa atin yung pag-help sa mga bata kapag sila din aware din sila sa psychosocial intervention. So, pwedeng i-share ninyo itong link na to. No, ayun yung kagandahan sa mga webinars natin. Pwedeng i-replay, no? Share yung link dun sa ating, ano, sa mga colleagues natin. And then, share din sa kanila yung mga references na yon So, para kung sakaling yung group ninyo, di ba, strong yung group ninyo sa school, isa man sa inyo hindi maging okay, alam mo kung kanino ibaba to, alam mo kung sino yung sasalo din sa'yo, kung sakaling hindi ka din, okay. So parang, yon you have to take care of yourself then uh, Yung mga teachers ngayon, um, sobrang stressful talaga po yan. Naintindihan ko po kayo. Um, kaya, yon um, natural po talaga yan na minsan okay lang mag-step back, mag-take po kayo ng post, and aminan talaga na, yun, minsan hindi nyo kailangan i-force yung sarili sa psychosocial intervention. Pero hopefully nakatulong yung principles na PFA, look, listen, and link. So, kung hindi kaya na mag-work yung look and listen, yung link po talaga sige gamitin ninyo. Ayan. So, thank you so much po. Okay. So, thank you, Ms. Rian. Um, this was really been an enriching sharing with you this morning. And siguro ako natatandaan ko talaga, stress is not our in enemy, di ba? So, pwede natin yeah. maging friend with stress. Kailangan na natin ng, to find ways. And also mm-hmm. to help our clients help themselves. Di ba? 
Um, and siguro last is yung importance ng linking and referral. So, very important yun. And thank you for all these PDFs and thank you for all the sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Miss Rian. Thank you, Miss Juliet. This has been a very informative morning for all of us. And uh, and the discussion really was very practical. Ano? Talagang what is needed at this time, di ba? So, um, because there are a lot of changes, definitely madaming um, stresses. So, definitely madaming um, interventions that has to be done psychosocially, di ba? And of course, our teachers being there, no, um, in touch with our students, sila yung nasa front line in this aspect. So, this has been very, very good, no? This has been very helpful for our audience for today. Thank you again, Ms. Rian. Thank you, Ms. Juliet. Okay. Thank you so and much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you we hope to have both of you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, and to our audience, thank you very much for um, for joining us this morning, for staying with us today. And I'm sure you're going to look forward to our other um, Chalk Talk online sessions. Um, like tomorrow, we're going to have um, the third installment of the series with the Love Institute. Uh, tomorrow, the topic will be focusing on caring for the parents. When we were talking about um, the relationship between parents and, and, and children for the past two sessions, this time, we will focus on the parents. And then on Saturday, we're going to continue with our series with, uh, on the curriculum development in the new normal. The topic is effective online instructional strategies and content using an instructional design model. So don't miss that. That's going to be 10 o'clock on Saturday. And then also next Saturday, next week, we're going to have another um, run on the curriculum development in the new normal series, this time on effective assessment. So again, thank you. So for those who haven't yet downloaded the handouts, we have a lot today. So thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Rian, for sharing um, all of these links and all of these um, um, resources. So please do download them. I'm sure this, these are going to be of very good use for all of us. And, um, and some other reminders, for those who have registered for today's Chalk Talk online, you will be receiving your certificates in two weeks' time. Also, this session is being recorded, so you would be able to have a copy of the recording in 24 to 48 hours. And then please do accomplish the evaluation survey at the end of this session to help us serve you better here in Chalk Talk Online. Thank you very much. I'm sure you got a lot for this from this morning session. We look forward to having you again soon. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. education through quality textbooks.